to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. October 22nd, the uh, Rochester Common Council meeting. Everyone have a chance to review the minutes? Yes. Motion to approve. So moved. Second. Second. Is the alternate state your approval? Yeah. Okay. There, uh, one addition to the special meeting that I talked to them about with uh, what we did with the animal shelter we would add that they had come and presented um, information. So he said that we could approve it Move and then sign next time. So, so you need to make a motion to move to approve it with corrections October 2nd. Yes. Okay. okay. Right. And I make a motion to move to approve with the corrections for October 2nd. Is a second? I think Brian seconded in, right? Yeah, I'm sorry. He seconded. All in favor say aye. Aye. You can do the first one. Who uh, moved in? Brian Sackler. She made a motion. Brian Sackler. Oh, that was actually October 2nd. He did it from September 24th. Oh, we did. Oh, we got the other one. No, no you're right. Was, was it one motion? Oh, so that's what I was confused about. I wasn't sure if it was one motion or not. You can make it. Okay, so we'll just make you even have it. Put it in there. <laughs> just say. Okay. <clears throat> Sorry. Okay. <laughs> Okay, uh, communications, Beth. Yes, um, and of course, I lost a piece of paper. Okay, um, at the bottom, on, on, I wanted to kind of go over the, the, the format of the agenda because it's confusing uh, Trent, and I think it's probably confusing everyone. The ordinance resolution area on the agenda is basically like a table of contents for me to know what resolutions and ordinances we're taking care of at the meeting, how many I've signed ones I need to get at the end, and then they're in order by number so I can keep track. So basically, we take care of the resolutions as we're talking down the, the points in the in the old and new business. So I didn't want that to be confusing because we always, by the time we get down there, we will already have voted on them. Does that make sense? That's where I got so confused last time because I was like, <laughs> I know. <laughs> so anyway, so that's that's basically just a kind of a placeholder to let me know how many signed copies I need to get back. Gotcha. Okay, uh, old business. Uh, Amy, we have some updates on the uh, uh, possible Dora uh, ordinance. Yeah. So um, we had a, a lively meeting last. Uh, meeting with lots of great discussion, um, lots of input that was provided related to the DORA. Um, since then, we've done follow-up conversations, um, spoken to multiple people, and um, what we will be presenting in October um, is just uh, November. Today's October. Um, November is um, just the downtown DORA only, not the special event DORA. Um, we feel that that doesn't meet the expectations of the concerns of the citizens, so we've decided to put that on the shelf. Um, so the downtown door, which just is the area related to the restaurants, um, the hours that we feel make the most sense related to concerns from the citizens would be Monday through Thursday, um, 4 p.m. to 11 p.m., Friday and Saturday, 11 a.m. to 12 midnight, and then no Dora on Sunday. Um, honor our faith community um, so that is where we're landing um, we have a couple of questions for the aim attorney related to things that Trent had requested um, such as if we wanted to uh, choose to get rid of Fedora would the Board of Works be able to do that outside of the City Council I'm asking if that's possible um, so you know if we need to uh, remove it um, and the other question I had was related to if new restaurants move into the, the uh, downtown Dora, could we indeed uh, put monetary value on them applying? That was something that was in the ordinance, which I don't think we could do, but um, I'm waiting to hear back from the AIM attorney. So um, the next request that I had um, requested to do is to put the information in the media, which I will do. I will send the map 
in its totality is, um, and also the uh, details so that the general public can see that and then we will have them on the docket to vote on in November. So that's kind of what The other thing we talked about too, and I think I know Amy and I have talked about this, that if we do this, I'd like to, the council to consider not having uh, Dora on the nights we have the holiday stroll or the boo fest where it's a family or a family event that was one of the complaints we heard from pastors is the family part of it um, we do have a lot of uh, lumber children during those times and that's something to think about and if there's another event that we think we need to avoid because of that uh, we need to talk about that next time too so. okay is that it on that for now update I will have all the details. Um, okay. We have something in print well before the meeting. Yes, I plan to, because Andy has um, everything ready. It's just the map needs to be updated uh, for the, where the signs are. I have to get with Dwayne and um, get the sign locations updated. Um, and just the two questions that are outstanding are all that we have and plan on redogging Becca so we can get that to at least a good two weeks or more before that so you have time to look at it. So, and we did already update the event list um, with that. Like we excluded Boo Fest, Holiday Straw, and is where another, is there another one out there that I'm not thinking? I not really. So this is where it gets a little bit confusing, and I'll need to ask Becca about this as well. So because we are not doing the special event, Dora. Oh, our list. We our may list have to is that. irrelevant. Okay. But if we can add, I don't know if we can add into because. I don't know if that I heard you tell me this before, so. Just so you know where our mind was on it. This like may be an informal agreement between the restaurant and the exactly. We're not serving any door cups on these nights, period. Yeah. It doesn't have to be anything special as far as right. writing or anything. We just have to have a general understanding because we are going to hold, you know, if we pass this, we are going to hold these restaurant owners accountable. Absolutely. And so um, that's it. That may be a, just a general understanding. So do it as kind of like a best uh, practice. Or yeah. Best. Uh, yeah. So, so not have it right. okay. I, would, I would worry about having him forward this because we're going to have you guys are going to make sure Absolutely. I'm looking at you yeah, <laughs> so I know that one thing that Becca said is to make sure that the ordinance is clear enough for the um, Alcohol and Tobacco Commission to know when they are when they show up and right. okay um, so we'll have more on that to the council sooner than later yeah. they can review it is there a requested you want me to get a requested by date that you want me to give it to you just so I can push for that? Two weeks. Two weeks enough, Andy. I don't know how long it'll take to get the map. It won't yeah. take that long to make it. I think it I just have to sit down with Dwayne and get it, and we should okay. have it. So two, two as long as Becca responds to our questions, we should be able to make it. Because Andy says the two weeks. Okay. All right. Light up Rochester. Here's speaking, Anna. Hi. I'm Anna, and 30, other people. Seconds, have 30 seconds, Anna, by the way. <laughs> 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 He's going to sleep, I'll wake you up. So, okay, Gary is also on our team, and Chris White and Emily, his wife, are on the team, and our illustrious Julie is on the team. So, um, I guess we were here before, but we didn't have all of our docs in a row, and I think they're in a row now. So, I put some of these around. So, Chris had a vision. He came from Mentone, they've done this there for years. And uh, it has had good results. So this guy, he, he's a gem. He said, I want to see Rochester be a better place at Christmas. So he came up with this idea. And anyway, uh, so the rules would be that uh, no November 30th to December 14th, people could enter this contest. And then the judging would be December 15th to 21st. So basically, he has a Facebook page called Light Up Rochester. There is a piece of paper on it. There's a form on it. You sign up, and you agree to all the rules. And then Chris and his team, we go out and take pictures, put them back on that Facebook page, and uh, people will vote on who's the first, second, and third winners of residences and businesses. We're going to have residences and businesses. Um, so we're going to solicit some prize money for this. Our team is going to go around to different businesses and solicit some prize money. And what we're going to do is we're going to use that prize money and buy um, chamber bucks. 
And so keep us away. We'll keep the money in Rochester. And uh, it's just, it's a good idea overall. So why we're coming back here to you guys is we did not realize the price of advertising would uh, break us up. <laughs> so we think since this is a brand new event for Rochester, we really need to advertise it in several different ways. So we do have a sh uh, free article coming on the shopping guide. We're hoping to get on the first federal uh, radio program. Julie has a, is going to allow us to put it on the Times Theater. But we'd also like to make some of those little yard poster things you know, so we can put them around the stop signs and whatnot. And we want to boost Facebook, which costs a dollar a day. So we're going to do that the whole month of uh, November for $40. So our ask is $500 or whatever is the best you can do for us. And we'll try to modify what we need to do with that. Any questions? I'm good to pull 500 out of the mayor's class. Everybody likes that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a great, I think it's a great source of revenue. That's, that's, that's where they always go. We can't find any place else. They come to me and say, "What is the?" I won't tell you what Andy wrote. Told me to ask. Oh yeah. <laughs> so you'll, you'll write me a check for five hundred. Yeah. Yeah. Right, Julie. Second. Yes. That's the next paper period. We'll make sure you're on the list. All right. Thank you. Did you make the motion? We have. Oh, no motions. I'm just, yeah, we, so we need a motion. Well, I, I have to correct oh. this. I'll make the motion that we pull out of the mayor's time. Second. We move to second. All in favor say aye. Aye. And Beth, I'm abstaining. Julie. I just love taking money out of here. Is this where I'm supposed to ask for money? <laughs> yeah, they can ask for the next money. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It is. It's October 22nd, uh, Times Theater's doing awesome. I told you before, we welcome back almost 16,000 people since reopening. We keep plugging away. We had a, our first genuine stinker last month. We had an awesome bluegrass band, and I mean awesome, and 30 people showed up. Oh. <laughs> But we took it on the chin. They uh, performed like they were in front of a couple hundred. Um, we've got some great shows coming in November, um, two of which should be sellouts. But um, we are out of payroll money by this time of the year, which I'm your only, I'm your only paid um, employee, and we can always use help on advertising. So any consideration to get in your um, full budget would be much appreciated. Um, we're all pretty deep at the theater. We've volunteered for years. Um, it would be nice not to worry so much where every paycheck's coming from, but any and all consideration, we take anything from five to 15, or I have a big imagination if you want to go more, but we'd appreciate any help. Wait, that's about where we left it. I mean, 10 would be great. County's shown some interest in matching, but whatever. Beggars cannot be choosers. <laughs> We've got good support throughout the county, so. How does that work best? Because we have already determined the budget. I know. I don't know if she's wanting to get it this year, then we we could do a we little do this year, a little, I mean. And I hope everyone knows we're a nonprofit. And we, you know, I've got all, everything like that with the community. We love matching grants, all of it, but that's, it's up to you guys. We've never asked for a dime. I do know that. I think you're asking less than what Carmel does. Yes. <laughs> And, and I will tell you, you know, we are all in this together. But I talk to a lot of other theaters. I network throughout the state. And, you know, a lot of their life is based on innkeepers' tax. And we're not there yet as a community. But, you know, that's where they get anywhere from five to $40,000 a year to advertise. We can't afford to advertise like we should. I mean, it's brutal. You get 500, that is, you know, a baseline. If you wanted to get on radios and stuff like that. But we're good stewards of money. We pinch every penny. Um, we're bringing quite
quite a bit to Main Street, but that's where we're at with it. You can discuss it. You can talk to me later. You know, it's the way she does do a lot of work. I don't know what the resources are. Well, it definitely brings business to town. When you say you can say, there's no debating how big of a role the theater is playing here downtown. Oh. What's, what's your guys' thoughts? What's what the with? What other money do we give to the Rochester downtown park? Do we give it to the Rochester The downtown RDP downtown? you did this year. The okay. theater you haven't. Okay. So this I is mean, and okay. even past administrations. We, okay. we pri you know, you know that. We bootstrapped ourselves. Trent would come in when the county gave us money generously in 21. We wouldn't have opened without him. It was part of uh, a rescue plan. But we stretched those dollars so far, it was crazy. And they will also tell you we report every penny. You don't, um, you know, you'll know what we're doing with it, but. So the county gets money. They did. They did. They did. Andy, would you think, uh, I'm thinking maybe the RDC, because it's, it's really for economic boosting our community. I mean, what do you think about doing run out through the RDC. I think that would make sense. What do you have? Uh, can you come I, on the 30th as the next RDC? I, it's week on my, week it's on my schedule. Because you have to keep in mind too, when you're doing, you know, part time for RDP, which is awesome. I, you know, I'm passionate about this project. That also leaves me self-employed for health insurance and, you know, all that good, fun, grown up stuff. Let's, uh, let's go through the RDC next okay. week. Okay. You guys okay with that? Yeah. We can do that. And you guys can tell me on the site kind of what you're in your mind. Uh, I can present the RDC as far as the one that you think is a, just to have your input on it. So, okay, we'll do that. We can do that. Okay. All right, perfect. Okay, Beth, you want to explain resolution 31-2024? Yes, it's the uh, final resolution for the uh, Rochester Appropriations and Tax Rates for the budget. And this is. This reflects the reduction in the park. If you look down on where it says 1303 park, it's we took that 1.5 million dollars out, but it doesn't change the tax rate because we took it out of the revenue and the expenditure, so the tax rate remains unchanged. So everything else is just like it was last month when I presented it. So I would like to approve it since I have to upload it to the DLGF on Friday. And all we have to do on this is just make the motion to approve this resolution and vote. So moved. Second. Mark seconded. Second. Mark seconded. Bob made the motion. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. Aye. Um, and then you have, when you sign it, you have to be sure to mark the little box and I may abstain because they will send it back to us if you don't. Is there one copy we sign or we sign everything? She said three. Oh, okay. You sign one copy, yes. And you send oh, it down. So okay. check the box and then in the box right next door. So you sign it. Okay. 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 And then the um, other one is the salary um, resolution for 2025 that also has to be uploaded to the DLGF. And I sent that out ahead of time and people have I hope people were able to look at it. I know I sent a couple copies of it. I had some people come in at the last minute and ask for changes, but they all went down. So the good news is that the original one I sent you was higher than the one I sent last night at 10 o'clock. So I don't know if you've had a chance to really look at it. So did everyone have a chance to look at that resolution 35-2024? Mm -hmm. There again, we just need a motion to <coughs> approve. So moved. Brian, Brian moved. Amy seconded. Been moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 You have a copy down there to sign. Okay, uh, the interlocal agreement and new business. Are there any other old businesses there? The interlocal agreement, we basically, I, I, I thought we signed it last time, but I'm 
Chairman Schultz did last time. I do have a question, Brittany. Um, why didn't the auditor sign that to council president before he wrote it to us? It's on the paper, so they need your signatures too, so I'm going to send it back to you. Well, that's going to be the financial portion of it, so there's already been an agreement, to my knowledge, that look what you've agreed upon right. for that agreement. Yeah. Um, so it will go to the council next. But the, the auditor didn't sign it because she wasn't at the meeting. Okay, so we're going to send both of the signed, the, the, the regular documents, the real documents, not the copies, back with you, and then you're going to have them signed again. One of them back to us. That's correct. Okay. Just want to make sure we're clear. So, this is just so we can go to Central Dispatch. I talked to you guys about it last meeting. You confirmed it. What I gave you was a draft, not an actual final copy. And they have adjusted that from last time to this time to where, thanks to the county for only charges for November, December instead of October. November, December, appreciate that. Um, but you want to explain a little bit of the of the hundred thousand? I maybe you did a little bit, but we uh, we went we've been paying them fifty, and now we're going to hundred to for the full coverage. So even though it says it's prorated for this year, we still owe you the fifty thousand for covering midnight dispatch workers. So you, we pay them. We have been paying them fifty thousand dollars a year. And, and Andy, I mean, we've met, I think we started this discussion back in April, and everybody seemed very comfortable with that 100,000 as a fair number. And we'll yeah. evaluate it. I think, you know, uh, Rick and Dave and I and Brian talked about this. We'll evaluate it year to year. Brittany, if, if we see a, an area that needs to be tweaked, we can do that every year just to yeah. have a gentleman's agreement going forward. So we basically need a, is there anything else you guys want to add? The only thing I might add is what that does for you, that also gives everybody, he's got in there where there, there'll be a board that sets a policy for the 911 center. So it won't be the commissioners. It won't be, you know, it'll be the board, which is, you know, the mayor, the police chief, uh, sheriff's department, fire department, corner. I, I can't remember who all, but basically. Is that going to replace the 911 board? Okay. All right. I would you guys will be the that board. Of course you will be on it. So you'll set the policy for her. Now we signed the policy thing last night because she needed it for uh, Parkview to dispatch Parkview. So we did that last night, but that'll be the last thing after you guys sign and get it together. Then it's you guys to make the policy here. Right. Okay. So go ahead. Um, when I was reading through that, I thought and I want to just make sure I understood it. It almost sounded like the police chief would term out and you wouldn't stay on like I, all the members and maybe I just read that wrong that there was like a term I mean, and so I didn't know if that meant that you were going to find another person on Rochester Force or somebody else in the sheriff's department I mean it was it read to me like it was kind of cart well I think it says in there and I, I off of memory that you can appoint somebody if you can't make it or somebody you can have your assistant or somebody yeah right it's virtue of position, not the name. So it's whoever's. Yeah. Item eight. Item eight on the NLA says uh, each appointed member shall serve for at least one year, but shall not serve more than four years unless such extended service shall be recommended by the appointing authority. Oh, because it's a four year contract. Yeah. Oh, okay. Right. Am I right? It, 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 yeah. If I remember right, it's a four year contract, didn't it, Andy? Yeah. Yeah, it goes from now until. Or four years. Yeah, 15. Contract yeah, 2028. Yeah. So from November 1st, 2024 to. Okay, so we need a motion to approve this. So moved. John moved. Bruce seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Uh, when we get these signed copies, I'll don't, don't leave without them. Okay. You got them both. Brittany, this looks like it only needs the council president's signature. Oh, it does. Yeah, that's correct. Right. Yeah. Sorry. There should be two copies there with those. Yep, I see it. And the mayor. Oh, and the mayor. The mayor has assigned it signing as well. And I'm assuming that I'm supposed to sign in this blank line down here as a, te as a testing. So 
blank. Thanks everyone for your patience. Oh, and Brittany, will you make sure I get notified on those meetings? Yeah, you bet. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. Um, do you, while we're here, do you have anything else you want to add for the county? Guys, any one of you? I, I don't. I come from the inner local. I think that anything they basically, yeah. Unless you guys got any questions for me on anything. Uh, I am going to jump Mike Ladd up for a reason. I um, didn't stick yeah. around for a long part of the meeting, but he's. I want him to discuss some progress that we made before we talk about the water side of it. So he, he gave you guys all a map. Mike, go ahead. You've heard me talk about uh, the tabletop study for the proposed industrial park in the past. The map that you've got is just a conceptual drawing of a number of buildings on a completed park. Um, I wanted to pass them out to make this kind of a real thing for you tonight. Um, of course, obviously, we've got uh, issues with getting the infrastructure out there and moving forward in those, those areas. In that case, uh, what I'm doing is right now I'm writing five different grants, uh, a couple of them on uh, infrastructure funding and a few other uh, projects that uh, we've got going on so um, I just wanted that to be for you um, another thing that our program we're working on is called red which is rural empowerment and development program uh, this is a new one from the state you heard me a couple months ago talk to you about stellar program this is a follow-up to it what this amounts to is no money comes in but we will be uh, working if we get an award. And there's only three uh, what they call units in the state that are going to get award. Our unit is Fulton County. I'm working with all the other cities in the, t in the county to uh, bring this forward. And what we will do if we get it is we will get support from Ball State and we'll get support from the state of Indiana and do some conceptual planning unifying going forward with one plan <coughs> over a period of time instead of every city working on its own anymore. Uh, just to show you something that's happened, um, Monday I had a meeting in Akron and uh, they have a project where they want to uh, work with a removal of a, a trailer court that's in town and do a housing project. So our housing people uh, we're down at this meeting and we are now working in Akron to bring new housing into the area. It's just beginning so there's a lot of work to do. We've got uh, all kinds of situations down there to, to work with. Um, next, the Lily and Ready2. They've got a roadblock that the state has thrown out. Um, the state wants, uh, as far as the arts, literally is concerned, the arts and culture and the blight removal, um, they want strategic long-term planning processes. So everything's on hold. We have no idea what the deadlines are any longer or not. Um, we are working on, uh, within the regional group to define uh, an arts and cultural strategy um, we're probably into, well, I know we're into 25. Uh, if the state's involved, we're probably into 26. But uh, as far as the blight removal is concerned, they now want uh, us to give them figures on job creation and uh, estimated salaries for those new jobs. Um, frankly, we're trying to figure out how you do blight removal and create jobs at the same time. It's something new for us, so we're still working on that. Um, like I said, I've got four or five grants going. Um, we are 
completed on the hotel study. Uh, it came out very positive. I think I gave everybody, uh, I meet, I go to so many meetings, I forget who I give what to anymore, to be honest with you. Um, but we, I gave out uh, executive summaries uh, a couple, at the last few meetings and things. Um, we got a rating of 96 out of 100. And the people that we're talking to have never seen a 96. Uh, so they were just really, really happy. We are uh, a good prospect for a decent hotel. Um, we're also working with the existing hotels showing them what they can do to improve what they have already so that they can upgrade themselves. Um, and we're just trying to work with everybody at this time. We're still a long way away from having a hotel, but uh, we are talking with a company. We are also talking uh, with landowners, property owners <coughs> on where we could go. So there's a lot of discussions going on in those areas. Uh, let's see, what else? Uh, one of the grants I'm working on um, as far as, and this is separate from the Ready or from the Lilly money, is an owner-occupied rehabilitation grant, which basically comes down to blight removal again, and uh, that's due in a couple of weeks, so we're working through there. And I'll shut out with this. Uh, Blackheader is finished. The gas is in. The water is in. Everything is in, it's been paved, and I'm talking to one company that wants two lots and a second company that is interested in a third lot. And uh, negotiations are still working on out there. So that's everything unless you have questions. Works for me. I, I did talk to one of our developers on the three uh, apartments that were submitted for bid. Just the same with text today. So when are you going to find out whether you got the award that we've discussed and offered the abatement to? You know, uh, November twenty first is when he said he'd find out. Is that when we're set? Okay, because that was a new. That was the one I've been trying to find the date on. Yeah, uh, I thought it was earlier in the month, but he said November twenty first uh, when we find okay. out which or how many, if there's even one or. We hope for two, but it may just be one, but we'll see. Well, the way things are going, uh, we'll have ours. We found the site for the FEDCO site. Um, there's another one that we're working with, and then uh, this one in uh, Akron. Uh, Akron uh, we could have as many as three housing developments going on at once. Yeah, we're going to make a dent in our housing needs, it sounds like, pretty soon. We need 650 units over the next five years. Um, we'll make us that that would be a good tap three of them would be a good start. Yeah. And what we are looking at in front of you on the map is, you know, hope, hopefully many jobs. Um, we all know what the community suffered back in 15 or 16 when deans went out as far as jobs, and I know how we suffered as a city uh, with our cash flow coming in for water and sewer when that went away. So. Uh, we're trying to build forward. I've heard many people say, well, just get somebody else out there at Dean's. <laughs> it doesn't work that way, you know. You've got to find just the right fit, you know, and that's not easy to do. So uh, we're trying to make up for some lost time. So, so these are new potential. These are, yeah, buildings. these are just, this was a, an engineering firm. So here's what could, could be. Uh, what you have in front of you is a dream. It's okay. not going to be that way. It's not going to look anything like that at the end of the day. But um, these people are thinking of, on this direction, and we're trying to get the money in um, through grants and such to uh, get the infrastructure out so that uh, we can move forward on this. Okay, thank you, Mike. Yep. <laughs> My name is Tyler Koffel. I'm a manager at Baker Tilly. I've been working under Eric Walsh for the last six years um, on utility projects. Um, but in, at the end of 2023, the Water Board hired us to do a water cost of service study. Um, 
the goal of the report was really to reallocate rates to the correct customers and the primary drivers of that, which is a 2025 project, um, and the fact that the utility has not done a rate increase since 2011. Um, there was a small, there was outside user surcharges incorporated in 2021 and some other changes to miscellaneous fees, but the actual usage and flow rates have not been updated since 2011. Um, so that was kind of the, the reasoning behind them, behind the water board wanting this. And really our recommendation for cost of service studies is every 10 to 15 years. Um, if you're doing um, across the board rate studies and rate increases, because as you increase those rates over a period of time, you're, the allocation of those rates between different customer classes kind of gets out of whack. And this aims to reset those back to re or allocating those rates to the correct customer classes. So what I'm gonna do, I set the final report in uh, bound form in front of you. I'm gonna go through the table of contents quick just so you know what's in there. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time in it because it's a lot of numbers um, that take a long time to explain and understand. Um, so the table of contents, the first section here, pages one through 12, really look at the, the utility as it is now and where it is going forward. Um, so page two will calculate the pro forma or the future operating and maintenance disbursements of the utility. Um, page four is your capital improvement plan. Page five is the proposed project that we're talking about for 2025. Um, pages six through 10 are your proposed debt for, for said 2025 project. And then page 12 is your revenue requirements, which calculates the rate increase. Um, I'll get into that in the presentation, so I'm not going to, to dig into that here. But starting on page 13 is where the actual cost of service study starts. Um, I'm actually going to talk through or just point out page 13 to you. Um, so really what we do with a cost of service study is we get the full billing database for a full calendar year for the, for the water utility and break it down by customer, class, meter size, flow, and then rates. So what we're essentially trying to do on page 13 is to tie into the revenues recorded based on the billing determinants that were shown in the customer database. So you'll see on the far left, we're calculating minimum usage, the number of bills, times the rate, um, and then the right side of the page is looking at your flow brackets, as the flow at each flow bracket. So I'm not gonna go into too much more detail, but just showing you kind of what goes into this. You'll see in the bottom right, um, our calculation for the, the billing determinants and, and the revenues that we calculated were about $60,000 lower than what was recorded. We like to be within 1% of revenues recorded. We're not, but we are on the conservative side. Um, so what, what this is saying is we're using billing determinants to calculate the future rates based on a the billing determinants that were 5% less than what was actually received. So if we were higher than that, we were saying you had more flow than what was actually, more revenue than what you had. We were using, we were then using more flow. We would calculate rates that are lower. So we're calculating it on the conservative side. We think that part of that revenue variance is due to sales tax. I think that's kind of the driver there and just how it's um, being recorded in a payables account, but it's, it's not, a, not a huge deal. We're, we were happy to see that we're on the conservative side. All the pages in between really look at allocating those costs to different customer types um, and different meter sizes. I'm gonna skip to page 33, where all of the, everything kind of comes together on this page and it shows you the, the cost of service currently for each customer class, the revenue, the normalized revenue under existing rates, and then shows you the revenue under the adjusted rates. So what this is saying is your cost of service in the far left column, that's the total cost it takes to, to operate the utility, to pay your operating costs, to pay your debt, proposed debt and current debt, and then pay the capital plan. So that's about $2.5 million. Your current revenue under existing rates is $1,222,000. So what that's saying is you need an increase in revenue of $1.3 million. So then you'll see on the far right, we've tied all those out. All of our estimated revenues are tied out within 1%. So as if, if you go through the report and you have questions, just let us know. I'm gonna cover this at a high level in our presentation um, and just kind of point out the key things, but that, those are the two pages I kind of wanted to point you to in the report. Any, any questions yet?
All right, so on the agenda, um, I'm kind of going to walk through quickly what a cost of service study is in a little bit more detail. Um, kind of lay out the AWWA, the American Water Works Association guidelines for performing a cost of service study and then the process of the cost of service and obviously the results for the city. And if you have any questions, please feel free to stop me because some of this is kind of in depth. So the definition of a cost of service study is to allocate a utility's revenue requirements to its customers in an equitable manner. Um, like I was talking about earlier, this aims to reset your rate structure to more equitably um, share the costs between your residential, commercial, and industrial users. Again, revenue requirements, that is operating costs, capital improvement plan, and your debt service. Those are the three things that go into your revenue requirements. Those are the three things that you need to keep your utility running. Um, why is this important to do it this way? Like I said, this is an every 10 to 15 year thing. You don't need to do it every time you do a rate increase. It is obviously more expensive to do it, but it is it does ensure equity and fairness between customer classes, um, and it ensures that customers pay, pay rates proportional to the cost of providing them service. So that, that's the important thing. It costs more to provide service to industrial users than it does to residential users, and that's kind of what the study aims to do. Um, like I mentioned, this it's guided by the American Water Works Association, so all of our steps are based on those. I will note that there is a, a little bit of an art to this. It's not all science. Um, for example, with this one, the fire protection costs came out much higher than what would ever be feasible for, for the city. So we had to reallocate some of those costs to the actual customer flow bills just to make it work and be feasible for the town or for the city. So that's just an example. Um, our baseline version is always based on science. Then we kind of back into what the water utility wants to see. AWWA guidelines, um, they just provide some structure on how to work through a cost of service study. They've got principles on fair and transparent, um, great design to reflect the actual cost of service and the need um, to provide the, the water to the different customer types. Um, they provide cost allocation methods for distributing those costs to the different customer classes, to the different usage types. Um, based on different usage patterns and specific demands on, that they place on the system. Um, customer class allocation, again, charged based on their unique consumption profiles. You'll see um, industry has a higher peak than residential does, so they should be allocated more of the peak costs than residents are <coughs> allocated. Um, and then they just provide an insight on rate design, um, what works best for affordability, conservation, and other So building a cost of service study, it's a, it's a long process. I said it, that we started the cost of service study in 2023 at the end of last year. It takes six to eight months to build out and, and get to the their end results that's, that the city would like to see. Um, so the first thing that we request is the billing database. We get a count of the customers, we get the count of customer bills. Um, and then we also have the financial piece of this where we need to understand the revenue requirements of the utility. What are the costs to operate um, annually? The capacity of the system also comes into play. So we're testing whether or not the utility has capacity at the plant um, to continue serving its existing customer base, um, which it does. So that's, a, that's good news. And then the capital improvement plan is a big piece of this and, and we'll kind of get into that a little bit. The, uh, Last two things, project sources and uses, we'll get into that I think on the next slide, and then your revenue requirements, again, those are your three cost buckets that you have to be able to afford. So as if you go through the book, you'll kind of see that's all laid out kind of in a, in a way that makes it a little bit easier to understand. Obviously, it's not um, as easy as a straightforward cost or a rate study, but um, kind of details everything out and how we came to our results. So the actual financials of this, the project source and uses, a um, lot of columns on this page, I'll kind of break it down into three separate sections for you. So the first one is the 2024 bands or bond anticipation notes. So in order for the water utility to issue loans through SRF, it has to pay preliminary engineering, financial, other costs like that to be able to get to the point of closing with SRF. Um, 
Some places have the cash on hand to afford that. The city does not. It's, it's very common to not have the cash on hand to be able to afford it. Um, so you'll see in the 2024 bands column, we've got $1.3 million in water utility improvement project engineering costs. And then there's $1.6 million um, in lead service line engineering costs that are, that are being built into the band. Um, and then we've also got about $60,000 in band issuance costs. So ultimately what that comes to is the utility will issue a bond anticipation out of just over $2.6 million. Um, this, the city's working with a, with a bank uh, to get that issued, planning on closing on December 5th um, with a six month call provision so that when the SRF loan is issued next June, it can be paid off through the issuance of the long term financing. The only out of pocket expense that the utility will have to pay is the interest expense that accrues for that six month period. Um, you will see the, the cash on hand amount at the bottom. That just assumes the amount that the utility is paying engineering costs up to this point um, and assumes that the utility won't be repaid for those costs. That can obviously be changed if, if so decided, um, but we would assume that they won't be re repaid at this point. Any question on the bans? Okay. So the biggest piece of this is the 2025 project. Um, you'll see there's eight different lines for different types of projects included in this. We've included three series of bonds. So the series A is a 20 year bond. Um, the length of maturity that SRF offered, offers is based on the useful life of the assets. So your 20 year bonds include everything except for pipe related costs. Um, so you've got your Manitou, Hydrant replacement and the elevated storage tank replacement, or not replacement, elevated storage tank. Um, those costs come to about $5.8 million. Um, and after all soft costs and contingencies are added in, it's about seven, seven million eight hundred eighty-nine thousand dollars So that's the first series of loans that you'll issue through SRF. Series B is the 35 year eligible cost. So it's all pipe related costs other than your lead service line requirement or your lead service line replacement. In total, those have come to like to about $4.6 million. And then your final Series C loan is the, uh, or Series C project is the lead service line replacements. So what you're doing, we have about $3.6 million in lead service line replacements for the 2025 project. Um, you'll be getting a $2.5 million grant from SRF to pay for half of those costs. And then a $2.5 million loan at 0% that we paid off over 35 years. Um, the Series A and Series B loans will be paid off at SRF's standard interest rates, um, their pool interest rates. So those will be, those are looking like three, three and a half, four percent right now. Again, the timing on this is um, it's looking like June, June of 2025 will be the closing on that bond. Um, on that series of bonds, and again, that will pay off the bond anticipation notes. There'll be nothing left outstanding on that. You'll just have to pay the interest expense. Mayor, I'll kind of kick it over to you now to, to talk about the different um, current needs of the utility versus the growth projects included in the, in the project. Well, 75% of what we're looking at on the rate hike is just on need. Uh, like you said, the Manitow Heights hydrant replacement, the water corrector from the 14 loop, um, that service line, and then I put in the water tower as a need. Because right now we have 700,000 in storage. I was gonna ask uh, uh, DJ uh, his opinion on the, on the public safety side of that being, we could drain our storage tanks in a big fire pretty quick. Um, to get where we are at currently in our usage, another 500,000 tank would be big enough. Uh, to give us any growth room, we need to go 750. And the other 250 is cheap gallons. When you build a tower, that last 250 is cheap. Um, we were short in the towers we put up, we should have, they should have been all bigger. So those are needs, and that, and that covers 75% of our rate increase. Um, I went back and did some calculations on a 4%. You kind of did a 3%. I did a 4% because I heard municipalities typically go three to five. So I just split the difference. And we'd have been nearly double at this point in time of where we were uh, 
and I went back to 2009 because that's what I thought we were working out. But anyway, uh, and we would have accumulated cash, you know, through those periods of time to where we'd have a lot more cash to throw out these projects of need. The other 25%, and I wanted Mike to speak because we do have a lot of things happening. I mean, obviously we have to service these bonds with our current usage. So therefore, we have to have our rates established against that current usage to secure these bonds. However, I'm expecting you know quite a bit more usage. As I said before, we lost a lot of use when we lost teams. So we're trying to get those jobs back, we're trying to get the flow back through the housing projects, to the commercial park. We anticipate a lot more usage on both water and server side. So uh, the other 25% of that rate hike is to get the water out through the industrial park area so that we can have our utility established and we, we have had some real interest out there already. So all that's encouraging. It doesn't uh, take the sting away from what has to be done. And uh, you know, I've addressed this in some money, my, my state of the city address in, in, in January and I, I've just got to hit it head on. It is what it is and there's not a whole lot we can do about it if we want to um, move forward. So anything I've Left out of that. No, I think I think the biggest thing about the ask Marvin if you have anything you want to add to that, Marvin. No. <clears throat> Sorry. No, good. I think the, the biggest thing to add about the, the future growth projects is that if, if future customers come in, the economies of scale start to grow. Um, not saying at all that your rates will go down. It's not a promise we would ever make, but it, it eases the impact in the future when you have new companies coming in and increasing the usage on the system. So. That's something to keep in mind. Obviously, it hurts to do it now, but in the future, it'll be beneficial to have that water available to them when they do connect. The last piece of this, and this is not included in our rate analysis, this is just for the city's um, knowing. 2026 and 2027 led service line projects. Commonwealth is working through those estimates right now. They're still doing surveying to see how much um, more on top of the Series C bond will be needed in lead service line replacements, but we just plugged in um, five million dollar bonds for those two years just to, to see what the rate impact would be. Um, and it looks like it's for the 2026 project would be about six percent, the 2027 project would be about another seven percent. So obviously those are not being included in this rate design. That's just future projects down the road. And again, those are preliminary numbers. Um, we're not sure where those will come out at. So it's just something to to keep. Keep in mind that that's a state requirement that they have to be uh, replaced in 10 years, I believe. So that's something that the, the city will have to start, or is looking at, and will have to start replacing very soon. Any questions on the projects? Okay. So this is the revenue requirements. Um, as I alluded to earlier, this is kind of breaking down, if we were doing an across the board rate study like is normally done, this is how we would calculate the rate increase. Um, so looking at this schedule, the top half of this, down to this subtotal is your total cost. So in 2023, your total cost to run the utility was just above $1.6 million. After the estimated operating and maintenance disbursements, um, the addition of the proposed bonds of $821,000, and the increase in the replacements and improvements of your capital improvement plan. We estimate your post-project um, operate or revenue requirements to be $2,759,000. That's an increase of $1.1 million from what they are currently. Um, we take out all of your miscellaneous revenues that aren't related to your, your rate structure and your total net revenue requirements are $2,623,000. Your annual revenues right now are $1,347,000, leaving you at a shortfall of $1,276,000 per year. If we were doing a, a normal across the board rate increase, that rate increase would be 94.7%. Um, without the 2025 project, the necessary rate increase would be 22%. So you can see that 80% of that rate increase is due to the 2025 project. But I do want to remind you that 70% of the 2025 project is based on current needs, not necessarily the future. Um, so we have a note that says 30 to 40%. It's, it's closer to 30% of the projects are growth, growth oriented. Um, like I mentioned, the, the primary drivers of this are your 
The increases in your debt service from the proposed bonds, you'll also have to fund a debt service reserve over five years for $164,000 a year. That is used as a, as a surety. If you default on your loan, it can be paid, can be used to pay your debt service payment. Um, so that's funded over a five year period based on your maximum annual debt service. And then the last driver of that's your replacements and improvements. So you'll see that in 2023, you spent 231,000. Your five year average is 397,000. Um, so that's going up by quite a bit. All of these page references shown on this are actual pages in the report. So if you want to refer to the operating section, you can go look in the report or the capital. The last driver of this, again, is the fact that rates have not been increased since 2011. Um, like Mayor said, it's, if you do 3% inflation over that period, it's about a 50% rate increase anyway. Um, so going 13 years without doing a rate increase is pretty uncommon these days. Um, so that's, that's the, one of the bigger drivers. You have to catch up on your, your current operating and capital expenses. We are currently, with our 4,000 gallon user, under for less than half of what the state's average is for a fourth out of the year. Any questions on the revenue requirements? Okay. So the overall results of our study, um, we're, sh we're shifting public fire costs from the general fund to the water utility bills. This is something that the city has talked about for a few years and is finally doing. Um, so essentially what public fire costs are is you have to oversize the, the lines and the mains for fire protection needs because your, your usage during a fire emergency is much larger than it is to supply water to a house or a business. So you have to oversize those lines. Um, the charges that we propose help cover those costs of the oversized lines to make sure that you can provide fire coverage to everybody in the city. Historically, the town or the city has paid fire protection costs from the general fund at $300 per month per hydrant. So it's about $118,000 per month. However, when property tax caps were introduced in 2010 timeframe, um, that introduced some additional burden on the general fund. and essentially taxpayers were paying it on their tax bills rather than paying it on the utility bills. So our, our intention here is that they'll now pay it on their utility bills every month. Now I'll kind of get into what that looks like. Any questions on public fire protection? I know it's kind of a complicated thing, but it's essentially a charge for anybody that receives fire service to um, just make sure everybody's been paying for something that they're benefiting. So this, the fire protection shift coupled with the rate increase is, um, results in over 100% rate increase. Um, the increase is allocated to the different customer classes like we've talked about, but it's more heavily allocated to the industrial users due to their usage characteristics. Um, to, uh, our plan for the rate increase, it'll be over three phases. So the first phase will be January 1, 2025. It's about a third of the, per, third of the rate increase needed. Um, and you'll see on the next page, it's not straight or 33%, it's kind of, it changes based on the different customer you're looking at. Um, so a third of it in the first phase, second phase, July 1, 25, that's about a quarter of the percent of the rate increase. And phase three is January 1, 2026, it's, about, it's the remaining 50% of the rate increase. So the goal here was to not overburden um, people in the first year of the rate increases. So we just assumed that 50% of it would hit in the first year, 50% in the second year. Um, so you can kind of think of phase one and phase two hitting in the same year. Any questions on that? The, the biggest reason for that is because businesses are already doing their budgeting for next year. so doing anything more than 50%, obviously it's just a, a, a target number that we were looking for. Um, but doing anything higher than 50% is kind of not feasible um, for, for businesses or residents setting their budgets for next year and trying to figure out how much their costs are going to go up. So that was kind of 50% for the first year and then phase three, the, the remaining 50% was the target there. 
So here's the fire protection breakdown calculation. Um, so like I said, it's, it's historically been, been funded by the general fund. So your total fire protection revenues to be recovered from public fire protection are $230,000 per year. Currently, the general fund pays $118,500 per year for, for fire, fire protection. That's based on $300 per hydrant. Those hydrant costs are going up to $600 per month. And that was after we made some adjustments to get it down to 600. So what we're, what we're proposing is that the remaining $112,000 to be recovered will be paid for by the users. Um, and that's divided by the total equivalent connections that's included in the cost of service study. Um, but what this is, is it's $2.35 for a residential home for phase one and phase two. Um, so that's just an additional charge on their monthly bill. It's one that you'll get questions on um, because it is broken out as a separate charge, but it's one that can be helped understood by just, it's, it's the cost of providing fire protection to everybody in the city. So that's for phase one, that's all of 2025. We didn't assume a change in the phase two rates, it's the same as the phase one rate, just to make it simple for um, the general fund. So 2026, you'll see that the revenues to be recovered are still 230,000. We've just divided that by your total equivalent connections to get a, a monthly charge for residential home of $4.85 per month. That scales up as you go up in meter size by the, the um, equivalency factors for each meter, and I can point you to the page in the cost of service study if you want to see it, but the cost per equivalent connection that's that's a residential user is $4.85 starting in 2026. This, this will help free up money in the general fund. Um, as we know, the, the costs of everything are going up and it's, it's a way to make the water utility more self-sustainable and then receiving all of their revenues for the, for the services they're providing. Any questions there? Okay. So finally, the bill impact. Um, like I said, phase proposing three different phases. I'm going to focus on the 4,000 gallon flow. That's the average monthly flow for a residential home. Um, your current bill is $18.88 per month. We'll get into a comparison of what the monthly bills are on the next page. Um, but for phase one, like I said, we're looking at like a third. Of the, of the increase, so 30% is what the rate increase is. Your monthly, the monthly bill goes up to $24.54, which is about a 17% increase in your water charges alone, taking out the hydrant surcharge, just the water charge is 17% increase. Phase two, it goes up to $30.07, it's about a 23% increase, so about a quarter of the increase. And then phase three is the final 50% of the rate increase. Your, your monthly bill goes up to $45.82. So all in all, it's over 100% rate increase, um, but it's done over three phases to kind of minimize that rate impact as much as possible. The biggest thing with this is, considering that the utility is, is um, closing on an SRF loan in June, you have to have rates in place that prove coverage on debt service coverage on the loan. Um, when you issue the bond. So this, this will bring <coughs> coverage and your debt service payments will start in, uh, probably January 1st, 2026. So you have to have your your rates in place to be able to afford those. I tried to get them to extend this rate increase over five years and they said no. Yeah, yeah. It, I mean, sometimes you can afford to do every, every year a phase of, per year, um, but just with the timing of the project, it wouldn't allow for debt service coverage levels. So we, we had to spread it out and that's the best we can do to meet the, the bond. Yep. Just on the hybrid surcharges real quick, you'll see that phase one, phase two, they're $2.35. They're both the same for 20, the full year 2025. And then phase three, they go up to $4.85 for a 5 8 cent. Any questions there? Okay. Um, this is a comparison of monthly residential bills. This is probably what most people are looking for. Um, so you'll see, like the like Mayor mentioned, your current monthly rate is $18.88. Estimated state average for next year is $40.78. We're currently working on updating the state rate rate studies, but based on the, 
2022 rate study plus some inflation, that's where we estimate that that rate's gonna come out at. So currently you're about, you're $20 under that, $22 under that. Um, phase one goes up to $24.54, phase two up to $30, and then phase three, you'll see goes up to $45.83, which I do want to mention a couple things with that. Um, we would not be surprised to see that state average go up even higher in 2026 because of the lead service line projects that are being mandated. Um, all of these different places have to do lead service line replacements. So they're gonna have to do projects, they're gonna have to do um, loans for their, for their aging infrastructure. Um, so we would not be surprised to see those going up. And then the, the other thing I wanna mention is Kokomo, Wabash, Warsaw are all Indiana American water users or they're under their, their jurisdiction. Um, that's a for-profit company and their rates are at your phase three rates are still lower than what they're operating at. So um, it's a pretty good indication that the, the utility is operating pretty efficiently. Any questions there? I, mean, I don't know if you have anything you wanted to, to say. No, I mean, I, I, I hate, I know that a portion of our population, is, it's going to be a struggle. Um, I want them to know that we're trying to, we've got a couple things we're looking seriously at. One probably going to happen uh, by next year is um, having uh, a targeted area in town each year that we're going to do sidewalk replacements. Uh, we used to have a 50-50 program. We're considering 100% coverage on that to replace sidewalks. Um, but we'll have a cap on how much we spend each year. So that's a benefit to the community. We're also considering a I'm not sure I'm using the right term, but an individual uh, residential abatement uh, for individuals that want to do, need to put a new roof on or, or uh, a new siding or uh, uh, improve their property. Uh, it was brought to my attention that that's a tool that we can use to help uh, a property owner improve their property but abate the increase in value, which will be a benefit to them. And one of the things I really want to try and get done, and I've been with Charlie and Mike a lot and discussed this and put feelers out, and we just haven't got much uh, feedback yet, is, uh, and I know it's been mentioned many times, trying to get an Aldi's in here or something similar that we can lower food costs or give people an option to, get, to lower their food uh, grocery bill, which could easily, easily offset you know the, the money spent on these rate hikes. So we are looking, trust me, at every opportunity we can to try and lower the cost of living for our community uh, because uh, you know these utilities the water and the wastewater they're standalone utilities they have to cash flow themselves uh, so you know like I said it is what it is we've, we've got to do it but at the same time we we're aggressively looking at opportunities uh, we're trying to land some opportunities that will lower some daily cost to our community as well yeah, and the other thing I'll hit on here is just reiterate the fact that it's been 13 years since the utility did a rate increase. Um, so even looking at a 50% rate increase, you're looking at a $28 bill right now. If that was if that was by inflation, 50% inflation over the last 13 years, and that's just assuming 3%. That's not assuming COVID inflation or anything like that, where we saw it in the six, seven percent. Your your monthly bill would be $28 for a 4,000 gallon monthly bill right now. So. Um, pretty impressive that the water utility has been able to continue to function and operate um, under those rates. No, it's, it's been hard to do. We've had to eat a lot of cost over yep, the last 12 sure. years. Sure. <laughs> um, next slide is your, the impact on the five largest users of the utility. Um, with a rate increase this big, we would recommend doing public outreach. Mary, I know you talked about doing that. Um, we'd be happy to help in any way that we can. Um, but these are monthly bills. So Rochester Metal, their monthly bills are around $5,400 right now. That would go up to, to $14,000 a month. Um, so these rate increases are, I mean, it's hitting everybody, hitting everybody in a little bit different percentages, but it is hitting everybody. Um, so that's something for these bigger companies and the, the school especially that has to set a budget on an annual basis to um, track their spending and we're seeing those those bills going up as well from $2,300 to over $5,100. So it's hitting everybody kind of at the same time. Um, any questions on these? Any other customers that you want to know? Okay. Mayor, if you want help with public outreach, just let us know. 
Um, system development charges is another big one, especially considering the growth in the industrial park. Um, we recalculated these for the water utility. Uh, the calculation is shown on the left hand side. It's, it's just your net assets for the water utility um, divided by your total equivalent meters. So what we calculated was a system development charge of $1,685 per equivalent unit. Unit That's for a 5 8 inch meter. So every time somebody builds a new home, that's what we propose or what we calculated as the max you could charge them for a system development charge. Um, the city wanted to back that down to $1,000 per equivalent unit. So anytime a residential home is built, a system development charge will be charged. And that's for that's for the new development to pay for their <coughs> part of the system. It's growth paying for growth. That money set aside for future projects um, for, for growth in the system. Um, so whether you're increasing your treatment can't plant capacity or doing something like that, um, that's where that money will go towards. Your current system development charge is $500, um, so we're doubling that. That's not anything that current users have to pay. It's just all future users that connect to the system. Um, and I brought up the industrial park because as those meter sizes get larger, you'll start to see a bigger amount that will be charged to them. So if they connect with an 8-inch meter, it's an $80,000 system development charge. Um, that's, a, that's a good um, buy-in from them and set it aside for a future project. That's for industrial? That's for any for any any size meter. I mean, if if a residential user connects with a three quarter inch meter, then there it'd be fifteen hundred dollars to send the It's based on meter size and their connection of their, their, their size. Their really a yeah. All right. So the kind of the, the conclusion here. Um, the primary drivers of this rate increase are the 2025 project. Like I mentioned, that's about 80% of the, the rate increase need is because of that project. Um, the ongoing capital needs, you saw the capital improvement plan growing. Um, and then in the 13 years since the last rate increase, and we noted here that 50% um, per year, 3% per year would have almost been 50% over that period of time. Um, Fire protection costs will be phased out of the general fund, bringing up $118,000 per year for general fund spending. Um, and then the rate increases will be phased in over three years, with the first two phases being 50% of the rate increase and the remaining 50% in phase three. Next steps on this, you're not taking any formal rate action tonight. There's nothing needed from you guys. Um, the rate ordinance introduction will be at the November 26th meeting, and then the public hearing and adoption will be at the December 17th council meeting. Um, Eric will be here for both of those um, to answer any questions you guys go through. Anything you want to go through. Um, like I mentioned, the SRF bonds, we anticipate those closing next June, and the bond anticipation notes, we anticipate closing on those early this December. Questions? If you have questions afterward, if you think of them and want to email them, go right ahead. Um, Happy to answer anything you have now, though. Do you have anything you want to add, Barbara? What is the full amount of the bond? Did you say? Yep. So, in total, the total project cost is $17,531,000. There's $2.5 million of that that's cash on hand. Um, so, it's about $15 million for the bond. Okay. We were talking. We were thought that was what it was. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? I think we're good. Okay. Good, um, delivering a tough message. Yeah. Very nice. Very nice. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, do you have anything you want to talk about this resolution number 302024, the issuance of the water work bond? I'm certainly happy to go over it. Um, I don't, I mean, I don't know if you guys have any questions or you want to explain why we're doing it as a resolution. Any, any information, if you got something for us. So which resolution are you referring to? The, oh, the resolution board? that the water board passed? That was on there solely for um, information. information purposes. The water board at the last meeting oh, you guys recommended vote. Recommending um, guys to move forward with the issuance of a bond, and so what we're here tonight for is approval of the bond ordinance. Okay. 
I'm yeah. happy to. But we don't have to go to this. This no. is the totally done by the water board. We yep. use for our own information. Yes. Okay, so we're moving on to the ordinance, which is uh, kind of lengthy, so we'll just read through it one time, Brian. <laughs> uh, what I what I suggest we do is make a motion to suspend the rules and uh, read this ordinance by title only. Uh, do it. Uh, we'll do it all three times tonight. So move. Second. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 <coughs> ordinance number thirty four dash. 2024, an ordinance of the City of Rochester, Indiana, authorizing the issuance of waterworks revenue bonds for the purpose of providing funds to pay the cost of certain additions, extensions, and improvements to the municipal waterworks of, of said city. Providing for the safeguarding of the interests of the owners of said bonds, other matters connected therewith, including the issuance of notes in anticipation of bonds and repealing ordinance, ordinances inconsistent herewith. Okay, so if it's uh, no objection, we'll have a second reading by title only. Oh, we don't have to vote on that. Ordinance number 34-2024. An ordinance of the City of Rochester, Indiana, authorizing the issuance of waterworks revenue bonds for the purpose of providing funds to pay the cost of certain additions, extensions, and improvements to the municipal waterworks of said city. Providing for the safeguarding of the interests of the owners of said bonds other matters connected therewith, including the issuance of notes in anticipation of bonds and repealing ordinances inconsistent herewith. Okay, and if there's no objections, we will have the third reading tonight uh, by title only. Objections. <coughs> ordinance number 34-2024, an ordinance of the City of Rochester, Indiana, authorizing the issuance of waterworks revenue bonds for the purpose of providing funds to pay <coughs> The cost of certain additions, extensions, and improvements to the municipal waterworks of said city. Providing for the safeguarding of the interests of the owners of said bonds, other matters connected therewith, including the issuance of notes in anticipation of bonds and repealing ordinances can, consistent herewith. Okay. <coughs> I need a motion to approve this ordinance. Mark moved. Second. Bruce seconded. <coughs> All in favor, please raise your right hand. Passes 6 0. Okay, Julie, is there anything else you need to? Do you want me to go over any of the ordinance? I'm happy to do so. Um, I made a long trip. I, it's up to you. <laughs> <laughs> would, would you like to know kind of some of the parameters in there or what's the. So he talked about 15 million, which did I see 27? I thought the same thing. <laughs> I'm not going to stand that close to the camera, so I'll be over here. <laughs> yeah, these are solely um, parameters, and so what you don't want to happen is issue um, a max amount of 15 million, and then come 2025, costs skyrocket like they did in the last couple of years. Your costs are now way up, and you have to kind of start over on the approvals. So this does authorize bans and bonds, both in the amount of. 27,500,000 as a, that's the, the highest you could go. We are not anticipating, in fact, I think the bands are gonna be like 2.6 million, um, and the bonds, it sounds like, are gonna be more in the $15 million range. But this is, so in, same with the interest rates, you authorize that the interest rate, the max rate would be 7%. We don't anticipate, you know, with SRF, I think we're thinking like 3.5%, somewhere around there. Um, and the bands will be significantly below 7% as well. So again, these, what we try to do in a, in a bond ordinance is solely for amateurs. We authorize up to a 40 year uh, maturity. You're not gonna have a 40 year maturity either, but it's in there. In fact, if you go through SRF, we can only go 35, but it's in there so that if you needed flexibility, um, you as a, as a board give um, direction to your mayor and your clerk treasurer to enter into all the bond documents, do the negotiations, um, and there aren't per se negotiations with SRF. SRF comes with a here's your rate, here are your terms, and we just document them. So there's not like that they're going to be taking it out. Now the ban is a little bit more if you're negotiating that with the bank, uh, but that process has already started. 
and um, but they have to stick to the parameters that are within this so they could not go above um, a seven percent um, interest rate could not go beyond five years you're not going to go five years in fact we're looking at taking it out in June of 2025 when the bonds are issued so that's what this is here for and as you notice it's you know it's 60 pages long so it goes through kind of how you're authorized uh, to sell the bonds what the redemption provisions can be but again they're all all parameters so this doesn't set out right now any of the actual terms it's just um, parameters that the mayor and the clerk treasurer stick to um, in the final you'll see a bond form um, as Beth pointed out there's lots of blanks in here but that's because those terms aren't set until the time that we would go to issue the bonds in 2025 again you're just authorizing um, them to enter into documents that would have these uh, parameters attached to them talks about you can sell it in a competitive sale you can sell it in a negotiated sale we're all anticipating you're going to sell it to SRF so but that's in there in case for some reason things change drastically and you wanted this to go out and do an actual competitive sale um, nobody would would recommend you do that right now especially if you can get in with SRF there they offer a great program with a very low interest rate compared to what you get otherwise um, but again this just gives you flexibility um, there's a large part of the back which is the financial assistance agreement that is a pretty boilerplate document that you enter into with SRF that has all the SRF terms again SRF completes that they fill in the blanks for your particular deal but it's very similar this same form would be if, if I were presenting this to any other community around that's it's not like okay here's your terms um, or here's your agreement this is SRF's agreement that uh, the communities enter into um, but and this lays out kind of that you're pledging the net revenues of the waterworks uh, to the repayment of the bond that's what is the repayment source which is why we have to raise rates and you also in this document you would agree that you will have rates in a sufficient amount to make those debt service payments um, and like Tyler said the SRF won't close if you don't if you aren't able to say or show that you have rates that would pay the debt service so that's why these these go hand in hand they're two separate things for sure that you know the, the rate increases um, are a creature of their own but they're obviously tied to uh, being able to pay these bonds off so I'm happy to answer any questions go over any part of the ordinance um, but you would have entered into one very similar to this in 2021 when you issued the bonds uh, it would be a very similar um, ordinance that one was not issued through the SRF at that time but um, the ordinance would look very very similar
and that will go through the uh, 6th of December and then we'll refer back to any bag pickup that might be out there until the following spring. So it's, it's underway. Uh, on the park side, um, we have a addition being put on the uh, uh, park maintenance building and that's just about finished up. It's doubling the size so uh, that will help us get all of our equipment and everything indoors so it's not sitting out in the weather. Also, uh, the park board has advertised for um, pool upgrades that they would like to start this winter and have complete before next season. Uh, the primary purpose is to replace the deck, uh, which is most of it is still the original concrete from 50 some years ago. Uh, they want to replace that. Uh, we've had some different contractors look at it and they've all pretty much told us the same thing that even though it's going to be expensive, the cheapest thing to do is to replace it. So um, more to come on that. Uh, but like I say, they want to try to get that started yet this year and then uh, have it done by pool season next spring. And that's all I have unless you have any other questions. Do you want me to share what we talked about with them? I, I didn't know if you wanted to do that now or if you wanted to do that. Uh, Trent briefly alluded to uh, the sidewalk conversation. And so Dwayne and myself, Randy, Trent, uh, Beth, and our two citizen uh, members, uh, Mayor Phil Thompson and Phil Klein, have been working to discuss a uh, new uh, procedure for potentially combining the water board, or not water board, the uh, tree board, not water board, tree board and sidewalk committee. So reinstituting the sidewalk committee, combining it potentially with the tree board um, and then looking at some ways in which we can, like Trent said, bless the citizens of Rochester by potentially providing um, sidewalks to offset some of these increased costs that the city is looking at. So we will have a full report of what that looks like um, to present in November. Um, Andy is working on an ordinance for the, com the combination of the two um, boards and then just have the details related to the sidewalk um, policy and procedure that we're looking at. So right. I believe we're planning on doing that in November, correct? Uh, to expand on that, just to understand what we're looking at, the city budgets so much a year for sidewalk improvements and we have had some different programs, 50-50. We've also offered just like a thousand dollars per job. Um, what we're seeing is that that money is not getting used because most of the homeowners in, in prioritizing their expenses don't want to put that in the sidewalks. They've got other places that money needs to go. So what um, we're looking at doing is handling the sidewalks pretty much like we do the streets. Um, we've had a, one of our citizen representatives have gone out and we have graded the sidewalks just like we do the streets when we do our street improvements. And so then we'll sit down as a group and we'll prioritize where we see sidewalks need to be done and, and then we'll just focus on those areas and, and just do the sidewalks. Coordinate with the homeowners and let them know we're going to replace however many feet of sidewalk in a block. Um, I think that way, one, we have some kind of control over the improvements in the sidewalks and and also that they get done uh, because if you walk any of our streets on the sidewalks are pretty bad shape. So this kind of relieves the homeowners of that responsibility. But still, I think we were still looking at possibly providing like a 50-50 if um, in a certain year uh, we are focusing on this area of town, somebody on another side of town feels like they need to have their sidewalks done, then we'll help them out. But understand that that's not our priority so and the citizen members will be the ones that will be the uh, conversation piece for the constituents so they have offered to be able to communicate back and forth related to timing expectations all of the things so that would be phil klein and um, mayor thompson and the other part that Dwayne and i had talked about 
which I will be working with Julie Wooten on is um, due to some uh, challenges on the downtown sidewalks. Uh, we are going to look at um, putting together a nice document that says, here's sidewalk expectations. This is who owns them. This is who's supposed to maintain them. If you want a sidewalk sale, this is what you go and do just so that they have that in partnership with the Rochester Downtown Partnership. So there's no miscommunications on uh, how the sidewalk activity is maintained downtown because we've had a couple challenges that um, occurred and caused a bit of a fuss. So, yeah, so we're going to have that ready hopefully as well. Um, before I go to the committee reports, are you guys need to leave. Do you, are you taking this copy with you or with you? Um, I don't need an original, but if I can Please. get um, a copy, yeah. that's fine. Okay, I know if we need to have Beth sign this. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 So we're good. Yeah. Beth, oh, here's, okay. here's a copy. Here's what you need to sign on that one. So. Don't get lost in this. Just the signature page is all you need. So, um, how are you guys? Thank you. Thank you. Oh, no, I didn't have a little Never mind. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. The committee reports. Uh, give me more you want to say about downtown partnership. Um, Beam Fest is this Friday. Um, we're also working on a really interesting collaboration for the Indiana Arts um, Commission for a downtown program um, and different looking at different shovel ready projects getting creative with some buildings by the theater but keep going <laughs> i had a call today about some uh, weeds growing between the theater and your building hmm. the artwork on the wall with the boo fest i thought there might be a lot of pictures taken on that wall it, and they offered to come in and help maybe they did today i don't know i called them back i talked to Dwayne. he said been abated or been vacated to you guys it's your your oh well, that that side's roots okay. mark mows it i don't know if we can talk <laughs> I, 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 can give you, I can give you the first one can have i don't know if we can talk my mark into uh weaving but maybe okay. she just mentioned with the boot fest there might be a lot of right. pictures will be taken on that wall right so. right okay um, we'll look at it thanks um area plan animal adoption center amy yeah uh we will be meeting next monday Correct. And I believe that is our public meeting for the solar. Solar. Area. Yep. So if you were interested in that, then please come at seven o'clock at the annex building. So we will be finalizing all things solar, um, and so that we can move that forward um, and sending it to the commissioners. So lots of work is done on that. Um, the animal adoption center continuing to work hard, um, continuing to want to know how to partner with the city so that they can understand what. Uh, needs are in as far as the budget to make sure that they are an active participant um, related to that subject matter. So um, they will probably come and give a final report um, either probably in December um, related to what they've done and so that everybody can. Is um, We haven't discussed that oh, yet, but okay. we talked about when they would do that. They definitely haven't decided that, but they would like to come and give a final report whenever everyone's comfortable with that. So, Wayne touched on a few things, but they met back on uh, October 15th. Uh, they did a few things that I picked up. Um, they had quite a discussion about lights in the park as well, uh, and some ideas there. Uh, I don't know if uh, they are going to work on that with Jessica Schaefer, was a big part of that uh, conversation. Uh, I also found out that Dwayne puts mulch around all the trees at the airport. I didn't know that. So, uh, quite a task. Lights. They put some lights up at the pavilion. There are 90 picketing tables in inventory. Well, I didn't realize we had 90 picketing tables. There are 234,850 gallons in the pool, and we probably not have a baby pool anymore in the future. I don't probably be seeing that. Maybe a pavilion or something. Like a pavilion, pavilion or something. Just too, too much, too many issues, health issues. Dwayne, did, did you know we had 90 picnic tables? 
Well, actually, <laughs> yes. You probably handle them several times, several times a year. <laughs> My guys do, yeah. Actually, that's just the wooden ones we have. Uh, we also have the new, like the 10 new ones that we bought, the metal ones. And then uh, we also have some uh, composite ones at some of the different the land. I think total, well, I know we have over 100, probably closer to 120, 125 picnic tables. And believe it or not, we used to have more than that. We've been calling a lot of the wood ones just, you know, because of the shape over the years. So we've been cutting down wood ones. And I think that's one of the things we're looking at in the future is to upgrade picnic tables, get some nice ones in there. Um, but yeah, a lot of picnic tables. I want to I want to thank the street department, the police department, even the fire department for the incredible work they did for the chili cook-off. It was a huge task, a lot bigger task than we've had in the past. And I want to really appreciate all the work that your teams do to make that work and make it safe. And, and I want to thank uh, actually we have over 110 volunteers throughout the chamber, and I mean that helped with the chamber putting that on. And it takes so many people, and um, it was a, a huge huge success and couldn't have done it without all those people willing to help so we'd love to have more help next year uh, before we leave uh, go any further do you have anything you want to add Harry on the downtown partnership or anything I, I don't okay all right uh, Mark do you have anything on the media or the council for aging this is one of those yeah. weird months uh, council on aging doesn't meet till next week uh, and uh, this is the aging for tomorrow night <laughs> A couple other thank yous I want to give before we adjourn. These two ladies over here, this guy, this rose sitting in between. I mean, the <laughs> Andy, uh, we've been calling on him a lot this year, um, and recently, especially with some of these ordinance drafts and so forth. But these ladies are tremendously busy on the days prior to City Council uh, Board of Works, especially City Council with all the stuff that they put together in our packets. And I know it's a stressful day for them, and I really appreciate all the work you guys do, and I, I know the rest of us do too. So thanks so much for that. If there's nothing else, we need a motion to adjourn. Motion to move. Everybody move. Everybody second. <laughs> 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 <laughs>